Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, welcome, Tanish, sir, and to your officials uh, to bring us up to speed with the priorities for the coming year in, at UN level and elsewhere. <clears throat> I want to warmly congratulate you, Tanish, sir, your department, its, its staff, etc., our government, the EU, and the UK government represented on, in the gallery on the groundbreaking Windsor framework. I think it's been welcomed by business, it's welcomed by all strands of union, or sorry, it's welcomed by all, a wide strand of the private sector and interests in the North already, and that's encouraging. Uh, it offers great potential to, for the social, develop, social and economic development of Northern Ireland in that it allows it continued access, to, free access to the UK markets, and continued free access to the single market. It's a double and wonderful opportunity for the people of Northern Ireland. I, I would join with you, Tanisha, and many others in appealing to all strands of unionism to grasp this opportunity, which also, of course, welcomes the, or creates the possibility and the real probability of a new administration in Northern Ireland, which is what we want and aspire to. Um, I agree with your condemnation of the illegal, barbaric war that continues in Ukraine. And in that context, I want to ask you about EU membership for Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia. Georgia, rather. Where are those? How do you see those applications? Where, at what stage are they at? What progress can be achieved there? And would you agree that a great proactive approach should be taken from a geopolitical point of view, from a humanitarian point of view, from every point of view, in getting those countries within the EU. And I know there are, there are achievements in terms of human of civil liberties and corruption, etc. Of course there are, but we need to be very proactive and very imaginative in our approach here. And I would similarly suggest, Tarnish, that at Montenegro, is another case in point here, where it's a country that's at a crossroad in geopolitical terms. There's quite a movement there that would move it towards Russia, and there's quite a movement there that would move it uh, towards the EU, and it's towards the EU we want to see it coming. So I would be saying, Tarnish, then, be interested in your response, that it behoves us all, and it behoves you and within the Council of Ministers to do everything conceivably possible to get those four states, Ukraine, Moldova, Georgia, Montenegro, into the EU as part of an enlargement that is necessary. Um, to ask you about the sanctions, I know there's been a curtain round of sanctions. Obviously we want sanctions that, if it, at all possible, don't harm the ordinary, innocent, unfortunate people of, wonderful people that we've all come across of Russia whether they're living in Ireland or we've met them in Russia, the great human beings that they should be the least of our target. The real thing is to get at the oligarchs, to get at the power pints and the people around Putin. And I'd be interested in your view, Tarnish, as to how we're doing with that targeting. Is there more could be done there to getting at the oligarchs yeah, as, yeah. rather than the, the ordinary people? To move on to Palestine, Tarnish, there's a clear deterioration of the situation there in the occupied territories. There's the demolitions, there's the evictions, there's the injuries and tragically the deaths. It's a complete breach of international law and I would ask you, Tarnish, what do you think further steps can be done by the institutions we are part of at the EU, the um, UN, etc. There is there any more we can do to pressurise? And do you see, indeed, in a similar tone to the last speaker asking you in but peace in Ukraine and others area, do you see any potential, any strands or any rays of hope in terms of achieving settlement in, in the Palestinian-Israeli situation? I, I know it, it's extraordinarily bleak, and the last few months have been, few weeks rather, have been beyond depressing. And I want to lastly ask you about Afghanistan. Uh, what can be done, Tarnish, to get the Muslim majority countries around Afghanistan, the Organisation for Islamic Cooperation, what can be done to 
uh, what interfere? How could you, within UN and within the various bodies, uh, get those people to pressurise Afghanistan more to move? Is there, I know you did say it's limited what we can do in terms of sanctions, but could we get pr Afghanistan pr pressurised more to uh, to create to a different situation for women, particularly in the education area? I know we can't really tie it to food and aid because people can't be left to starve, but it's a very difficult. I'd be very interested if you would. Uh, if you would elaborate in that area and comment around the whole Afga Afghan, yeah. Afghan and the ro women within Afghanistan, young women and education. And I just, I leave it at that chair, but I, I, I think the latter, the Afghan situation, is an abomination internationally at the moment. But it's a very complex and difficult one to deal with. Thank you.